डॉक्टर सुहेल यू आर देयर अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी डॉक्टर सुहेल आर यू देयर डॉक्सवेल आर यू देयर आवाज नहीं आ रही आपकी डॉक्सवेल जना साहब सलाम जी वाली सर सलाम सर क्या हाल है ठीक ठाक है वाली सलाम थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर ज्वाइनिंग सर बहुत शुक्रिया सर तो, तो मेरी आवाज ठीक आ रही है जी फर्स्ट क्लास सर फर्स्ट क्लास सर विजिबल टू यू जी विजिबल टू अच्छा okay. अपना डॉक्टर जवाद की आवाज नहीं डॉक्टर जवाद अनम्यूट करें जरा डॉक्टर सुहेल जी सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी बिस्मिल्लाह कैन यू शेयर कैन यू शेयर योर स्क्रीन सर ऑलरेडी आई एम शेयरिंग इफ इट इज नॉट विजिबल ये नॉट आ रही है सुहेल आपकी स्क्रीन मेरी स्क्रीन आ रही सर हां मुझे तो आ रही है अच्छा आपको आ रही है एक मिनट मैं देखता हूँ क्या इधर क्या मसला आ रहा है आप आप जरा देखें अपनी सेटिंग को देखें अच्छा मैं देखता हूँ सुहेल आप खुद नजर आ रहे हैं लेकिन आपकी स्क्रीन नजर नहीं आ रही नहीं आ रही सर अभी सर अभी अभी देखें सर आ रही है अभी देखें सर जी जी जो आ, आ रही है जी के मे फ्यू मिनट्स टू स्टार्ट जी आ, give me few minutes जी जी आपकी स्क्रीन नजर आ रही है आप प्रेजेंटेशन पे जाएं जी सर प्रेजेंटेशन खुली है सर मैं स्टार्ट मैं Uh, I will request other people to uh, mute their mics. Uh, presentation पे जाएं अपना स्वेल जी सर presentation खुली है ना आपको नहीं नजर आ रही स्क्रीन खुली है आपका डेस्कटॉप नजर आ रहा है सर हाँ 
जवाब साहब आपको नजर आ रही है स्क्रीन इनकी प्रेजेंटेशन सर डेस्कटॉप सिर्फ नजर आ रहा है सर मैं दोबारा कर लेता हूँ अभी सर कर सर मूव करता हूँ नजर आ रहा है जी मूव करता नजर आ रहा है ये सर ये प्रेजेंटेशन में ओपन कर दी अभी शो हुई है सर नो नो ये आप जहाँ पे प्रेजेंटेशन है ना आप उस जगह लेके क्लिक करें वहां जाके ये तो इकबाल साहब नजर आ रहे हैं जी सर आप डॉक्सवेल जहाँ पे जैसे पहले किया था ना आपकी वो अपना उस पे जाके क्लिक करें जरा अभी देखिए सर हाँ अब आ गई अब आ गई अब आप नीचे नीचे उसी कप पे जाएं जिस कप के ऊपर हमने स्टार्ट किया था वो स्लाइड शो हाँ इसी पे ठीक है आउज बिल्लाजीम बिस्मिल्लाम एवरी वीक गेव दिनार on covid and also on different other aspects of the infectious diseases like aids like uh, malaria like tb like other important diseases we also uh, on this webinar with collaboration of pma with collaboration of women uh, medical college aptabad and azad jammu kashmir medical college muzaffarabad pakistan physiological society pakistan association of pathologists we are conducting these uh, webinar but uh, from the last 4 5 weeks we were not, uh, not able to conduct because there were so many examination and assessment programs so last uh, week uh, i received a message from uh, ravalakot one of uh, our medical student was migrated from muzaffarabad medical college and was um, there and uh, his death made us uh, to conduct this webinar so uh, it is over to you uh, dr suhail to start this uh, uh, program and after this i will request general uh, jawad sahab to give the comments about this and today our objective is that how can we save our uh, youngest who do not know who was unaware who used to their heaters and other things in their and sleep without switching off so over to you suhail जिसमें I'll begin my presentation with the dedication to our beloved student who we lost recently due to this uh, tragic incident. And uh, in our recent history, national history, in January 2022, uh, there was an incident in Mari on 7 January 2022, uh, in which we lost more than 23 uh, uh, precious lives due to uh, this uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. There were like hundreds were intoxicated in this event. so uh, this uh, poisoning especially is relevant in the winters especially the northern part of pakistan with the heavy snow falls and low temperatures so why carbon monoxide is dangerous uh, because it is odorless and colorless gas and no one can detect like uh, like in methane gas we can smell but the, this gas does not have any taste or any smell any color so it is not noticeable and it has 250 times more affinity uh, than oxygen to bind hemoglobin that makes it lethal and another cause of high death rate is that patient first becomes unconscious and then gradually uh, it uh, goes into the coma and death and when the people are exposed to carbon monoxide gas the carbon monoxide molecules will displace the oxygen uh, in their bodies and leads to uh, poisoning which results in tissue hypoxia and uh, vital organs like brain and heart 
they, they get damaged permanently, if not reversed. So here is a slide. At what levels the carbon monoxide uh, causes the symptoms? Usually in the air, it is in the negligible amount, 0.10 uh, picometer. Uh, but if, as you see that up to 35 uh, ppm uh, parts per million, this starts uh, manifesting its uh, uh, symptoms. It starts from like flu-like symptoms, about 35 ppm up to 100 and headache uh, and usually it is with mild exposure and but it can become potentially dangerous in the levels between 100 to 200 there starts dizziness drowsiness and vomiting and between 200 to 400 there is front, frontal headache and fatigue if the patient is not uh, removed from the environment then it becomes the dangerous levels uh, between 400 to 800 millimeter uh, PPM, that uh, patient becomes unconscious and brain damage starts. And this is usually life-threatening uh, uh, symptom within 30 minutes. And uh, with concentrations above 800, there is convergence and death. And uh, at 12,000 PPM, there is usually death between one to three minutes. Uh, and it happens in usually self-intentional uh, uh, poisoning or the patient is exposed to high, high levels of carbon monoxide. What are the normal levels of carbon monoxide in the blood? Usually, there's minimal level of carbon monoxide in the blood. Uh, as you see, it's usually less than 2% or 0 0.02 uh, 0, uh, FAU2. Uh, and uh, in adult smokers, it is usually 4 to 5%. Uh, and in heavy smokers who smoke more than two packs per day, it can uh, increase up to 6 to 8%. And uh, so usually we do uh, in, in good smoking regimens, we check the patient's uh, carbon monoxide levels that if the patient is still uh, smoking or they have quit uh, the smoking. And there are some detectors in the breath uh, who can also tell us that the patient has quit smoking or not. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is not you know, unanimous data available all around the globe. Uh, there is uh, data available from the US. There are usually 50,000 visits uh, to ER annually in a developed country like US and with 400 deaths. And so if you see the graphs in the uh, summer season, it is usually minimal. But in the winters, it's the highest uh, incidence of carbon monoxide poisoning occurs. In the summers, if you see it's in the July, it's also peak because there are some fires, outbreaks, and uh, this happens usually in fire rescues, uh, firefighters. But uh, in the common population, it is in the <coughs> winters. Uh, what are the common causes of carbon monoxide poisoning? Usually, it's uh, carbon monoxide poisoning is there in the fire victims. Up to 75% uh, patients who have major burns, they also have concomitant carbon monoxide toxicity. The second most common cause, especially in our northern part of Pakistan, is uh, biomass burning, uh, coal burning, or uh, um, predominantly with the coal, and gas geysers or post coals. <laughs> our student uh, lost his life due to this gas geysers. Uh, what happens that when there is a, there is fire or burning process is ongoing in a closed or semi-closed space, it consumes oxygen and usually there is not uh, the area is really uh, airtight there is no more source of oxygen when the oxygen levels they get down that leads to inefficient burning and the level of uh, car due to inefficient burning the carbon monoxide is produced and uh, this carbon monoxide is also present in heavy hookah smokers uh, they also have up to 10 percent uh, even in some cases 15 percent of carbon monoxide Yes, so hookah is very common in Punjab and uh, certain parts of Pakistan, even in ladies. So if you see the slide, one hour of hookah session is equal to 100 cigarettes smokes, which are uh, equal to five packs. So some people think that hookah is not that dangerous, but uh, one puff of hookah is almost equal to one uh, cigarette, if you see. 
so that is also a, 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 the underrated cause of carbon monoxide so how does the carbon monoxide kills a person the carbon monoxide as discussed previously has high affinity for hemoglobin molecules it displaces oxygen from the hemoglobin which leads to leftward shift which means decreased oxygen is delivered to the tissues and the uh, hemoglobin uh, capacity to carry the oxygen is also reduced and that leads to uh, anemic hypoxia although the hemoglobin level are uh, are normal but uh, the actual hemoglobins uh, who carry the oxygen they, they become very very less and that uh, leads to anemic hypoxia that further results in impaired oxygenation at uh, mitochondrial level and uh, inefficient uh, oxidation leads to lactic acidosis and uh, the ph gets strong not uh, the carbon monoxide not only affects the hemoglobin but wherever heme is available in the body uh, it also binds to that, especially in skeletal muscles and myocardial muscles. Myocardial, there, are, there are heme molecules and carbon monoxide also binds with that. So, so usual symptoms, uh, as we discussed previously, the symptoms start from uh, th th 35 ppm and when it's about 200 ppm, it starts with the dizziness, uh, lightheadedness, disorientation, uh, headache, which is usually frontal and nausea and vomiting. The top three symptoms, uh, I have been a personal uh, survivor of carbon monoxide uh, poisoning. Uh, I remember in the uh, winters of 2014, I had a newborn baby who was born in uh, Rawalpindi. And uh, when we shifted him uh, for the Kika in the village, in the Jaila Valley, it's usually uh, very cold and there are uh, cold winds outside. So what uh, my parents, they did, they put on uh, electric heater and uh, a gas heater and some coals and the air tightened because the baby was premature. As a precautions, they, uh, they, they ensured that the room is warm, but within two hours, I started uh, this dizziness and uh, lightheadedness. And uh, I, I, I understood that this is carbon monoxide. I opened the windows and we removed from that place but those symptoms remained there for at least 12 to 18 hours. And when this uh, poisoning level, they, they get higher, then there starts the chest pain, myalgias, drowsiness, coma, and death. And uh, the, the death is usually due to arrhythmias. Hypoxic uh, cardiac injury leads to arrhythmias or the direct brain injury can lead to death. The symptoms, uh, uh, they are summarized in this picture start from the brain, dizziness, headache, disorientation, and impairment of the cerebral function and coma. And usually there is a visual disturbances also there. You see stars moving in front of the eyes, which I personally experienced. And then comes the muscle weakness, muscle cramps. There can be fits, heart and respiratory disease manifest. Nausea is one of the early features. And if there is any pre-existing disease, it also aggravates with this. This is a study uh, which was done in US, it showed what are the most commonest symptoms in carbon monoxide poisoning, which showed that headache was present, it is most uh, common symptoms, up to 60% of the patients, they had headaches. Transient loss of consciousness, or we can see aggravated dizziness is up to 40% of the cases, tachycardia is 25%, nausea and vomiting up to 25%, asthenia, low energy, 20%, dizziness, 20%, palpitation, 18%. These are the in the order of uh, frequency. There is evidence of myocardial injury in 17% of the cases, and the GCS starts to fluctuate, which initially manifests as uh, confusion in up to 15% of the cases. And then there is postural instability. The patient, uh, when the patient gets up, there's uh, lightheadedness and blackouts in 10% of the cases. In the GCS, when the GCS falls below 9, up to 8.3% of the cases, that uh, that's the point where is a serious threat to the life. Then comes seizures. Dyspnea is usually in less uh, uh, people, they uh, feel dyspnea. Otherwise, in the many respiratory conditions, dyspnea is a predominant condition. But uh, you see in this poisoning, dyspnea is not there. And severe metabolic acidosis ensues at the electric acidosis process starts in 4% cases, and chest pain in 1.7, and shock is about 2% of the cases. On clinical examination, 
will find the patient has uh, tachycardia, sometimes it has arrhythmias also. There is uh, tachypnea um, can also be there. For the, and uh, the most contrasting thing, uh, that's why the appropriate treatment is missed, that we usually check a patient with the pulse oximeter. And in this case, this is paradoxically, uh, pulse oximeter shows normal saturation. The reason because the carbon carboxy uh, hemoglobin is usually also reddish. And this pulse oximeter cannot distinguish between oxygenated and carboxy uh, hemoglobins because both are red. And it shows pulse oximetry normal uh, oxygen is shown. That's why most of the times the patient does not get the appropriate treatment. In the chest auscultation, usually there are not much symptoms. The like, chest is usually clear. And the more there is a decreased consciousness or lamentation, confusion, and there are usually cherry red spots. Usually, uh, as you know, that there is cyanosis, if there is meth hemoglobinium or any other anemias uh, or hypoxia, is there, there is usually cyanosis, but in carbon monoxide poisoning, there is cherry red spots. The patient remains more or less pink. This is the a classical picture. Uh, there is pinkish hue to the uh, skin. This patient uh, uh, actually uh, seems uh, that he patient has died and the contact points, there is blanching. Otherwise, there is reddish uh, discoloration of the skin. What we will find in uh, lab investigations, usually there is leukocytosis due to uh, stress or shift to the left. Uh, as pulse oximeter is normal, uh, and if we suspect there is carbon monoxide poisoning, it's always appropriate to go for the blood gas analysis, which shows that actual level of oxygen, they are very low as compared to the pulse oximeter. And uh, there is, uh, in the gases, we will also find uh, metabolic acidosis. The advanced analyzer, they will also give us information about the lactate levels in the blood. Uh, there is... Uh, Blood, if we have the facility of uh, measuring uh, carbon monoxide levels, this uh, uh, some of the uh, blood gas anal analyzers, they do have inbuilt carbon monoxide detections and some don't. So if we have the facility in a normal non-smoker person, if it is more than 3%, it is uh, usually a sign of carbon monoxide toxicity. And in smokers, and up to if there is uh, more than 10%, it shows there is uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. What happens that if you do the CKMB and troponins, they are also raised. The reason behind that there is a myocardial damage and shunning of the myocardium is there that leads to raised markers. ECG can also show uh, due to ischemia that T wave changes the dynamic ischemic changes and uh, in advanced cases it can show arrhythmia, especially the ventricular arrhythmias. And chest uh, X-ray you will find usually normal chest X-ray in this case, but uh, and CT is also normal in the initial phases, CT brain, but uh, the MRI brain shows, especially in T2 uh, weighted images, the white, map, uh, white matter hyperintensity is there usually on the MRIs. So, <clears throat> what could be the theoretical strategies to remove this carbon monoxide from the blood? There are the potential three uh, options uh, on which we can work. One is uh, the carbon monoxide, which is already bound to the uh, tissues. How can we reduce the metabolism uh, uh, metabolism rate? It, uh, because if there is increased metabolism rate, there is increased uh, carbon monoxide delivered to the tissues and there will be more damage. So uh, some of the strategies could be sedation. Or, and uh, decreasing the temperature control. And we will also discuss the drugs like beta blockers. They can also be uh, used uh, to reduce the metabolism. The second strategy is the carbon monoxide is already uh, bound. How can we uh, provide the uh, good quality or fresh hemoglobin uh, the, to improve the carbon monoxide clearance? There could be strategy of RBC transfusions and adequate cardiac uh, output. And there should be strategies to remove the carbon monoxide through the lungs. This can be achieved by giving the 100% oxygen or hyperventilating the patient and adequate cardiac outputs. These could be the uh, physiological manipulations which can uh, lead to uh, decreased side effect profile of carbon monoxide. 
So first and foremost treatment is we have to uh, remove our victim from the environment because why it is lethal if the patient is alone, uh, the, it sort of starts uh, like in the, from the confusion if it patient, then these events, they usually happen during the sleep time. The victim cannot move, but the best uh, strategy should be immediate removal from the toxic environment. The patient should be removed from the room or the, the uh, windows and doors should be opened so this gas can be removed from the closed environment. The second and most important treatment, uh, which is uh, which is available everywhere almost, is 100% inspired oxygen. And uh, there are some methods to deliver 100% oxygen. Although the oxygen mask with reservoir can uh, give us up to 80% to 90% of the FiO2, as initial management during the travel, the patient should receive high flow oxygen irrespective of the pulse oximeter saturation. All suspects uh, uh, or the suspected victims should receive high flow oxygen. And there is uh, some other methods to achieve 100% oxygen. In a conscious patient, we can uh, achieve this with high flow nasal oxygen, which can give oxygen at 60 liters per minute with 100% FiO2. And once we reach uh, to the hospital, then we can start the invasive mechanical ventilation with the patient's respiratory rate supposed to be set around 25 breaths per minute. So patient can hyperventilate and remove this carbon dioxide. In advanced setting, we can use the option of extracorporeal membrane oxidation. Uh, on can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay, yes, 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 advanced uh, centers we have ECMO like in AFIC and some other centers in Pakistan, but usually this ECMO uh, facility is not available. Uh, the concomitant management should include adequate hydration cardiac output. If the patient is in shock, we can start inotropes. There should be adequate liberal uh, uh, hydration. Uh, there is another theoretical options. Uh, the term used therapeutic hypothermia in which we uh, expose our patient to low temperatures uh, or we can uh, infuse the patient with cold saline. That's the strategy that can decrease the metabolism. And so uh, which ends up in reduced metabolism and reduced insult to the tissues. But these are still not proven and supported by the studies. And the one established treatment is hyperbaric oxygen. Usually in our environment uh, in the sea level, like in Karachi, we, we have the atmospheric pressure of uh, one atmospheric pressure, but in uh, uh, higher altitudes, that is difficult to achieve the in even the pressure of one atmospheric or 760. So uh, there is an option of which is called hyperbaric oxygen. This strategy includes uh, delivering oxygen at two to three times the normal atmospheric pressure. And uh, this uh, technique is uh, delivered by this sort of chamber. There is usually a closed chamber in which 100% oxygen is available. And then this pressure can be increased up to 2 to 2.5 atmospheric uh, pressures. This facility is uh, in Northern Pakistan, in my uh, knowledge, it's available in the NESCOM hospital, Islamabad only. I am unaware that in anywhere it's KPK, it is available or not, but uh, this h bot is basically hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So what are the indications of uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy? The commonly accepted indications are any neurological patients, a patient who, with the carbon monoxide poisoning who has any uh, neurological findings like uh, confusion or altered uh, mental status, coma, focal neurological deficit or seizures, they should receive. In pregnant population, as you know, that uh, fetal, they are especially uh, vulnerable to low oxygen levels. In the pregnancy, even with the levels of carbon monoxide greater than 15% in the blood, this uh, therapy should be offered. Or if the patient uh, has a history of unconsciousness, you can also give. The other consideration, if the patient is in shock, ischemia, infarction, we can give hyperbolic, uh, there is severe metabolic acidosis in the extremes of age, and in normal healthy person, if the carbon monoxide levels are greater than 25%, the H-bot is the treatment of choice. 
and uh, if there are abnormal neuropsychiatric testing results or even if there are burns there are some studies that uh, the burn itself they get improved with the exposure to hyperbaric oxygen therapy and uh, there is persistent symptom despite if you if your patient is receiving 100 percent oxygen so uh, he can uh, and he's still symptomatic then we can proceed to uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy there are also few uh, contraindications to hyperbaric oxygen therapy especially in patients with emphysema there are chances of pneumothorax and in patients who have uh, STF chronic sinusitis, which can also worsen with this uh, hyperbolic oxygen therapy. So, how does the H spot uh, improve sclerosis? It all depends uh, that the, normally, if the person is exposed uh, to carbon monoxide, there is one good thing about the carbon monoxide that this does not accumulate for longer time. The half life is around 320 minutes. So, if the if we keep a patient in the, even in the normal air. In 320 minutes, the patient uh, blood levels will drop to half and keep on dropping. Like it will take around 24 to 36 hours to get back to normal. But what happens if we give the 100% normal baric oxygen? It will it reduces to 74 minutes. The half life comes down to 74 minutes. And if we give 100% oxygen with hyperbaric with this uh, super atmospheric uh, pressures, that uh, time decreases to 20 minutes. So the rate of clearance you see improves drastically with the exposure to hyperbolic oxygen. If you see this uh, graph, you see that uh, the green curve is with the normal normal baric uh, with the room air, it, and uh, if you see uh, it, around 400 minutes, there is really the high the half life. But uh, with the black line shows the 100% oxygen at normal atmospheric pressure the rate of clearance increases drastically to three times normally. And if we give the patient hyperbaric uh, oxygen, it the time, this remains only 20 minutes it takes to clear the carbon monoxide from the blood. So these are the established treatments. There are some researches going on, on around the world about what could be the uh, potential treatments. There are a few uh, isolated case reports in which the doctors have used B12 and vitamin C, which can improve clearance in a few uh, case reports. There is another uh, cyclodextrin encapsulated porphyrin ring, ring that is specially uh, developed uh, chemical, which can bind the carbon monoxide. And uh, there is uh, also there is modified globulins who act as scavengers. These are still not available commercially. The research is ongoing. There's established drugs, allopurinol uh, can be given to uh, reduce the uncontrolled inflammation. Uh, Methylprednisolone is also recommended in one study. Fructose can uh, improve the oxygen uh, uh, glucose uh, delivery to the tissues. And as I discussed, that etinolol can be given in a, a patient with tachycardia, but a patient who is stable. But a patient who uh, is in shock, we cannot give beta blockers. So what we can do this levosimendin uh, is a drug which improves uh, cardiac uh, oxygen, oxygen delivery and it increases the blood pressure also. Hydrogen sulfide is also recommended by a few uh, physicians around the world. It can decrease the long-term uh, squilly and magnesium sulfate has also been uh, claimed to be showing some promising results, but these uh, all treatment options, they haven't been established in uh, their anecdotal studies showing their benefits. And uh, as most of these drugs, they are already established, so we can use in our patients. So as the topic had, the, what are the long-term sequelae of carbon monoxide poisoning? It's not about the poisoning acute event, the, because there is brain damage, there is usually long-term sequelae. And uh, studies have shown the meta-analysis up to 40% patients, they have long-term impairment in their functioning. The symptoms they manifest as anxiety, depressive symptoms, impaired cognition, poor concentration, amnesias, and post-traumatic stress disorders, and asthenias. These are really the symptoms in the survivors of carbon monoxide poisoning. What actually happens to the brain if we do imaging, uh, there is 
uh, entity which is called delayed post hypoxemic leukoencephalopathy, which ensues within one to six weeks after the exposure. Uh, that leads to brain damage. There is really uh, myelin sheet damage, diffuse brain atrophy, neurological uh, neuronal apoptosis. There uh, a study which has shown, uh, which was done in survivors. 33 years after um, the incident that showed the patients, they still had the brain atrophy and the coronary infarcts. There is a drug which is used in the dementia, memantine, which in, increases the cerebral blood flow. And there are some other uh, mechanical action level. This can be offered and this is freely available in the, the market also. The main focus to prevent these sad incidents is the prevention. And uh, uh, you know, this, this is digital media, uh, like uh, we can say era of digital media. So there should be more public awareness that people should not sleep while uh, heaters on, especially the gas heaters or the coal heaters. And there should be provisions of safe energy alternatives through electricity, as we've seen in uh, US or Canada or in Scandinavian countries, the temperatures, they usually minus, but those people have central heating system. Uh, through electricity and they have this uh, outside of their homes there's usually the there is a compressor and the home inside does not have anything apart from few uh, plates uh, metal plates which conduct the heat uh, to the rooms and keep the temperature but obviously this is expensive the, but provision of safe energy should be focus of the government and uh, the policy makers and uh, while designing the houses there should be adequate ventilation, there should be exhaust or there's uh, the public, the departments who are involved in designing of the houses or give NOCs, they should keep in this mind that houses should have adequate uh, ventilation. Another strategy is to putting uh, carbon monoxide alarms in the houses and that can detect uh, carbon monoxide in low levels and in, uh, they can bell. So the uh, households, they can get alert and get cleared. And uh, another uh, thing in which uh, happened to our student that the gas geysers usually due to closed spaces, they are kept inside the um, washrooms. So what happens that uh, when the gas is burned, there is really carbon monoxide. And uh, they should be placed in open air. Uh, that's uh, my presentation. I would welcome Thank any Thank you questions. very much, uh, Dr. Suhail uh, Raja. Now I am looking two major uh, journal, uh, two journals, Journal uh, Zaidi Saab, very respectable. Nami, sir, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Thank you very much. You joined us. And General Ansari Saab. And also, Professor Amol is from, is the dean from the Malaysia University. Uh, Dr. Amol, welcome. And also, I am looking uh, uh, Nizami Saab, Professor Nizami Saab. I will invite you at the end. So uh, now I will uh, request uh, General uh, Jawad Ansari Saab because he is the uh, panelist in this uh, uh, webinar. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very well. I'm very clear. It's okay. Very clear, right, uh, Professor Mulalam, I am very grateful to you for inviting me to participate in this webinar, and uh, the topic is extremely important. Uh, in these days, and we have picked a very important topic. And I'm very uh, proud to say that uh, Dr. Swail Raja uh, gave very comprehensive and very beautiful presentation and really made me proud of him. It is uh, to his rising very good with there. I think the, the, the problem is that uh, this carbon monoxide poisoning uh, uh, is going to be very uh, problematic in this winter. Every winter it comes to be problematic. Though we don't have local data, uh, but we know, as uh, Dr. Sway Raja has shown, there are a lot of people in the US where a lot of precautions are being uh, taken and a lot of um, uh, bylaws exist for uh, uh, constructing houses. If this is so many people are affecting and being affected in USA, we can very easily know what is happening in our setup. I think incidence of carbon monoxide poisoning is quite high in our uh, in our setup, it may not be um, uh, those cases which die, but they might be having a 
a lot of cases of chronic exposure to uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, can you imagine we in our setting, in our uh, villages, we know many Babas who sit together, who are suffering from COPD, already with compromised memory. Uh, six Babas are sitting in a, in a room and all of them are smoking hookahs with no ventilation and, uh, and a gitti or coal is burning or uh, what is happening with them. In the morning, the Baba doesn't remember what happened. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is what is the scenario in our villages where women cook in the um, uh, in, in very close setting. I think uh, the clinical setting, if we know, there are only 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 two uh, that either they die and they are brought dead, or they are evacuated from the scene and suffer from uh, uh, see this outcome. Uh, serious outcome and uh, other scenario is when they come with a mild symptom. So the, the treatment which uh, Dr. Raja has uh, indicated uh, is, is unlikely to be available everywhere. The only thing which is important is to remove them from the scene and give them oxygen. I think this is what uh, it helps them particularly the oxygen through the rebreathing mask. I was just studying, uh, there's another scenario where we are exposed to chronic carbon monoxide poisoning, very small, high level of carbon monoxide in our setting, and we are exposed in kitchen and in, in certain other setting. And these people have, are going to have certain consequences which we exactly don't know uh, what are uh, those consequences for them. But in experimental studies, most of them uh, suffered intellectual loss and, and loss of memories. And certain people who survive, they do get uh, Parkinsonism, Parkinsonism symptom. We know the damage is to the striatum. So I think it's very good, uh, beautifully covered. The topic is very beautifully covered. And uh, I uh, do acknowledge the effort of, the, of your faculty and, and your college and all those who collaborated in this activity. And uh, I, it is a very uh, good moment for me to share uh, this webinar with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, General Zedi sir, can you comment something? General Zedi sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, sir. Here, clear, sir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Such a pleasure to see you. And Assalamu alaikum to the rest of the participants of the webinar. Um, Sohail has been my student and a student of General Jawad also. And it is a great pleasure to see him shine under your guidance and come to this point where he is lecturing us. And it's such a pleasure. <laughs> and it, it is such a pleasure. It is such a good thing to see that he has come to a point where he has become a professional in his own capacity. And uh, sitting here in Rawal Pindi, I hear so many good things about what he is doing there in your department and how he has established that department and how you and your department and he is helping the people. Uh, coming to the presentation. Whenever we do this sort of presentation, there, has, there is an aim behind it. And uh, there can be, I think there can be two things that we can carry out out of a presentation. Uh, one is as physicians uh, to update our knowledge on the subject. Uh, from that point of view, I think Soil has done very well. He has covered the subject in its entity very well. He is, uh, it's a very big subject. It has to go into the depth of even just hyperbaric oxygen. You can go into great details about it. So he has picked up all the important points and he has covered all the things and uh, he's given an overview of everything. So he has done a very good job of it and he has updated the subject very well. And he has also touched upon uh, the new things that are being done. There's hyperbaric facility available in Karachi, although Karachi is at sea level, but hyperbaric facility is available at the Naval Center also. So, uh, but the problem with carbon monoxide present uh, treatment is 
that there are two things in essence. One is quickly removing the subject from that environment and two, providing him with the high flow oxygen as early as possible. Now, number one, we fail at both these points. We fail at removing the person from that environment in time. And then our logistics are so poor, unfortunately, that we cannot provide him that high flow oxygen, even if we get him to a hospital. So knowing about a subject is good, but the reality of the matter is that we cannot provide them with the proper treatment that is required to correct the carbon monoxide problem. Sure, so, sure. I think, so I think the solution, if we really want to reduce carbon monoxide poisoning, the solution does not, in our, in our setup, does not lie in the treatment at present. Obviously, as physicians, we must know how to treat it as best as possible. And there must be some facilities available where we should be able to provide the treatment. But by the time, like Javad said, the patient comes to the hospital, he is already dead or he has already had some consequence out of it. The treatment lies in prevention. Yes. And it is the responsibility of physicians and especially Pakistan Chess Society as such, we must, must get the message across down to the root level. I mean, not in the cities, down to the grassroots level in the villages. What is carbon monoxide poisoning? Not just geysers. Just now, what Jawaz was telling you, simple things like cooking, smoking in closed rooms, burning coal and sitting around it and smoking hookah all night. Things have to be taught on a national level on what a catastrophic problem this can be and how it should be. What is chronic carbon monoxide poisoning? What is acute carbon monoxide poisoning? And how it can be prevented? Prevention is the key that has to be stressed upon. Treatment, yes, as physician, we should know how to do it. But unfortunately, by the time the patient will come to us, he will be dead and it will not be possible for us to save it. So the solution lies in devising strategies how to prevent it. Thank you, Janasa. Other than this uh, uh, burning of the geysers and smoking and other things, because last from the last three years we are using the mask, can you think uh, mask can reduce the oxygen level and can increase the carbon dioxide? Because there was uh, no, some sir. objection no, that no, people, sir. they were not using they, no, are, they say, no, no, our, uh, can, uh, can you give the message that uh, a mask cannot no, reduce several, the oxygen several, level? Several studies have been conducted. Use of mask does not uh, impair oxygen delivery and it's, it is very safe to use the mask. Okay. Uh, Jana, Jav Jana Jawad, question yeah. to you, sir. Jana Jawad. Uh, I think uh, Jana Jadi is right. It is not reducing the delivery of uh, oxygen. Uh, okay. But there are studies where because you, if you keep on wearing a mask for a long time, there is a possibility of uh, carbon dioxide inhalation and you get effects of carbon dioxide and so certain people, they do get um, headache and all that. And, uh, and secondly, there are certain psychological outcomes of wearing masks, uh, you know that, and uh, it is also affect that. Otherwise, uh, it is true, it is not... Uh, affecting the oxygen delivery. And secondly, it was it was saving your life as well. So wearing masks at that time was very important. And uh, I think, but it should not be overdone now. Okay, another question is that, uh, uh, can you think the electric geysers that inverters we use in our rooms, can they also cause the carbon monoxide quest poisoning? No, it's not like it is burning of certain biological fuel and all that is electric things are, uh, they have got other rates, but not like this. Not like this. Okay. 
Uh, any other question? Any person you can, uh, if any uh, person I can ask the question. One, they one, can very important thing, one very important thing I wanted to tell you that which Dr. Swail was telling. Uh, the, nowadays, there is a tendency of putting Insta geyser or some sort of gas geyser within the bathroom. That is very, very dangerous. And, uh, and uh, that has to be discouraged. And secondly, uh, particularly, I think the, uh, the message should be prevention. The lead I got from General Dadi is uh, that from, on behalf of Pakistan Chess Society, we're going to run awareness of campaign from the Pakistan Chess Society side on, on TV and all that for, the, for our general public. I think this webinar has given us a clue that we should do certain things. Okay, another question is that uh, smoking. It is one is smoking, another smoke is uh, almost one of the last five, four, four, five years in Pakistan, especially at Lahore. Can this smoke uh, reduce the uh, carbon uh, oxygen level and increase the carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere? Uh, you know, there are studies which indicate that carbon monoxide level in heavy smoker can go even up to 13%. And they are still studying why these smokers, while normal people no, no, no. get Javad, 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 he is talking about smog, Lahore smog. Smoke, smoke, okay, sorry, smoke, sorry. smoke. Smoke and, and carbon monoxide? Yes. Can smoke uh, increase the carbon, di uh, carbon monoxide gas poisoning in the atmosphere? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Smog has got other effects. Okay. And secondly, it pushes you into the room when there's a cold, it might expose you, but not directly. I don't think so. Okay, okay. Okay, now, uh, uh, Dr. Inmol, uh, can you add something? Uh, Dr. Inmol is the dean in uh, Somalia University. Dr. Inmol, Professor Inmol. Uh, you can uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, Nizami Saab, now over to you. Professor Nizami Saab. Uh, thank you very much, Bukhari Saab. I appreciate your efforts and efforts with the Pakistan Medical Association. You are uh, giving a uh, doing a tremendous job indeed. Uh, as far as uh, the carbon monoxide and complications are concerned about it, and uh, General Saab is very much right, that prevention is the only way forward what we can do. As far as the treatment is concerned, Certainly, uh, Professor Raja Saab has uh, explained very uh, nicely. And I think that doesn't come to the patients, to the medical aid for that matter. And that is the only way that is the prevention. Uh, you asked about this, the smoke, the Lahore. Unfortunately, yes. oh. Lahore is Hello. at the top of the world as far you as the pollution is concerned. Can I, can I and uh, here with the smoke, we are now Love propagating over in Lahore or Karachi or Delhi that the people should not open the windows. Whereas for the carbon monoxide, we have to open and the ventilation is the only answer. So the cities oh, like Lahore, we are practically in a fix indeed because there is the cold and the cold temperature compels to be closed all your windows and the doors and to uh, save yourself. Yeah. So again, thank you very much, Bukhari Saab, giving me this opportunity to speak on this very important topic. I appreciate your uh, efforts. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Okay, uh, Nizami Saab, you are doing Now there is Professor uh, Abid Saab. Dr. Abid Saab, can you give the comment? about uh, uh, yes, the medical aspect of the uh, carbon monoxide gas poisoning? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. Uh, sir, uh, Professor Raja Saab has given a very good description of all the aspects of carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, I just wanted to add uh, the post-mortem appearance. Uh, in carbon monoxide poisoning, the post-mortem appearance of cherry red color is a very, very peculiar feature, uh, which uh, uh, towards the diagnosis of death due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Although uh, this color is also present in some other poisons also, but 
taking the history in view uh, this cherry red color cherry pink uh, color is uh, becomes pathognomonic so we can uh, diagnose the death especially when we were referring uh, to the deaths in closed atmosphere like uh, automobiles which happened in uh, quite frequently in mari uh, few years back also and last year also so just by giving the uh, taking the you know view of dead bodies Uh, we can uh, give a uh, uh, apparent uh, uh, opinion that the death has been due to carbon monoxide poisoning and that's all thank you sir thank you dr nizami sahab uh, at the end you can from the pma side uh, thank you very much bukhari sahab bukhari sahab mujhe ek chota sa sawal karna hai ji there is one uh, sure, i think let it be question first sure sure kisi ne let it be question first i feel ji ji please please सिमटम <laughs> lead to level of increased carbon dioxide carbon monoxide in the blood or can it give rise to symptoms like carbon monoxide poisoning he is ready sir can i ready sir sir jo the natural gas is uh, the, the natural gas that is being supplied by itself actually is does not contain much smell to itself let's first know that the smell that we appreciate is actually artificially induced into it by the uh, company itself so that uh, so that we can pick up that the gas is being leaked so that is not the natural smell of the gas the natural smell of the gas is a sulfur like smell those who have been to sui gas field by air will appreciate that if you are approaching sui gas field in a fokker air in the aircraft you can smell so there is a sulfur like smell which is very different from the smell that you hear in that you appreciate in your house when the gas is leaking so this is not the natural smell of the gas uh the natural methane is the gas that comes out is has different i don't know the exact symptoms of it but it is not it does not mimic carbon monoxide carbon monoxide yes. has a special mechanism which suhel has described uh by its uh, biochemical properties how it displaces oxygen so that has and like professor saw was saying in the post mortem appearance so that has a very special mechanism yeah. by it, it it has a special symptom yes yeah. because of its uh, by the way it, it displaces and the oxygen the person is going to suffocate the problem with the gas is its flammability when it is there in the room before the person suffocates the problem is that even if you try to switch on the light in your room the smallest of the spark will cause an explosion and the person dies because of a fire in the room rather because of a suffocation so the, the natural the cause of death in a leaking gas in the house is fire it is not suffocation zadi sir mera sawal isi tarah related hai in the dr suhail raja in his presentation told the incidents which happened last year in the mari i think this was due to suffocation not due to carbon monoxide can you comment on this the heat the the heaters which from the elect, from, from their uh, uh, cars uh, this uh, that uh, that occurred ye, 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 it's very difficult to say at this point uh, it would be pure conjecture on our part uh, and we should not comment on something that has happened nahi uh, ye jo death thi ye jo death thi due to it was suffocation or carbon monoxide gas poisoning 
sir i will not comment on it because okay. i have not i am i am not okay. privy to all the information that is available to me ओके okay, अच्छा ऐसा है कि अगर मैंने हीटर लगाया हुआ अपने गाड़ी में और उसमें मेरी डेथ हो जाती है खुदा ना खासा तो दैट विल बी ड्यू टू कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड गैस पॉइजनिंग आर ड्यू टू सफोकेशन हीटर विल नॉट कॉज अ कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड पॉइजनिंग बट 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 लेट मी एक्सप्लेन टू यू इफ योर कार इज स्टैंडिंग इन अ गैराज इफ योर कार इज स्टैंडिंग इन अ गैराज यू एंड द गैराज डोर इज क्लोज Door you is closed. start your car in the morning. There oh. will be a exhaust coming out from the car, oh. and that exhaust will be containing carbon monoxide. Sure, sure, sure. And if sure. the door is closed and your car windows are open and you are warming up your car and your car windows are open, that exhaust will fill up the garage room, and that can cause carbon monoxide problem. in a closed garage room professor bolazam would you uh, allow me to have a comment over here sir only one 50 seconds sir ji sir thank you sir uh, yeah. in fact you see i fully agree with professor dadi in fact this was you see some years back one of the methods of suicide going into a garage closing the garage and starting the car and that was you see i have read in the literature that this was one of the methods used by the suiciders you see because they say that in carbon monoxide the death is quite painless that's why probably it was very very popular with those people and they used to go in the car, garage close the garage and start the car and the carbon monoxide you see which accumulated used to kill them this was just a piece of information Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now over to you, Professor Nizami Sir, to conclude today's session. Uh, thank you very much, Bukhari Sir. I think uh, it was an excellent session, and on behalf of Pakistan Medical Association, I appreciate and my thanks to all the participants who have participated. At the same time, I will request you uh, to send this talk of uh, Professor Raja to Simao. You know that the Simao, the Confederation of Medical Associations in Asia and Oceania, we also perform such an webinar. So it will be very informative. And personally, I request to Raja if he includes this smog issue also in his talk. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, once again, I am highly appreciated by collaborators, uh, Women Medical College, uh, Abbottabad. Uh, Professor Salma Kundi is not here. Uh, she has to go uh, somewhere else today's uh, internet is there not working in abbottabad and pakistan physiological society pakistan association of pathologists and pakistan azad jammu kashmir medical college muzaffarabad with collaboration of pma inshallah we will continue these webinars awareness and the, inshallah next topic we will also request jana zaidi sahib and others because that is related to the Uh, uh, aspergillosis and invasive persistosis we have seen fungal infection in the covid uh, last from the last two years that we will connect this uh, webinar with the pulmonary webinar inshallah we we'll see you next sunday at 11 o'clock thank you so much once again everyone allah hafiz allah thank you very much thank you very much sir allah thank you hafiz all the best for everybody thank you allah we'll hafiz next, next week sir on this aspergillosis thank you so much sir thank you so much sir thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir uh, aa jaye sir ab chale muzaffarabad theek hai sir just coming sir do bhai munir sahab aa jaye thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir Yeah. <laughs>